Hello guys, I am Marco Maggiolo, the author of Can I Legends? And I'm doing this video today to give you some very good and interesting news. The audiobooks of the series is available worldwide. So for a few months we've been working in the audiobooks to make Can I Legends in audiobook versions. And it's finally, after months of months of working, we are done. So if you didn't read yet Canine Legends, if you want to read Canine Legends, or if you want to listen to Canine Legends, now it's available everywhere. It's available on Amazon as an audiobook. It's available on Books A Million, uh, Google Play, uh, Barnes & Nobles, everywhere. Spotify. So if you have Spotify, you can listen to Canine Legends now on Spotify. So we work with some professionals narrator. Uh, so Mario Colon narrated the first part and Jordan Henderson, amazing Jordan Henderson, read Kena Legends Volume 2 and he did a, such a good job that we hired him also to narrate Volume 3. What I'm going to do right now, I am going to leave here in this video a little part of the audiobooks that you can listen and you know if you didn't read yet Kena Legends or if you already read and now you want to listen, it's available everywhere. Thank you guys. Sunday morning and the scorching sun was already present. A heat that even wearing anti-sweatshirts, we still started to sweat just by being under the sun. About 50 people were scattered across the empty bleachers in the arena. Even though there were only a few people, you could still hear screams for Amy, Saini, Polly, and for me. Semi-final. The semi-final course would surprise all handlers. Treacherous and challenging, with backside jumps and a terrifying, difficult slalom entry alongside two tunnels that would surely cause eliminations. Do you remember that exercise in Boston last year? Leo asked me at the side of the track. Yeah, the one with two tunnels facing the dog walk? I answered. Same thing. Give her the slalom command and turn your body to the other side. She will ignore those tunnels for sure. Leo was right because as soon as the first duos entered the track, chaos ensued. Elimination after elimination. Of the first five duos, only Natasha and Sparky survived. Things were so complicated that out of ten duos in the semifinal, five were already eliminated. In other words, surviving without elimination would guarantee a spot in the final. Polly and Panda had also survived. Three penalties, two bars on the ground and a missed contact zone on the A-frame. Even though it was an awfully bad run, Polly and Panda had secured a spot for another final. Amy and X went in, and it was clear she was playing safe. Very cautious handling, taking X obstacle to obstacle without risks. Nearing the most dangerous point of the course, Amy simply slowed down, directed X to the slalom, and passed without X looking at the tunnels to the side. A better time than Polly and Panda without penalties. They also were in the final. On track, Saini and Maximus, announced the speakers. I could hear two or three people shouting Saini's name. The arena was so empty that the screams echoed from the other side of the stands. Saini released Maximus. The two consecutive wins in the season and the isolated lead gave him clear confidence on track. Using bold movements and all the aggressive handling possible, Maximus was lifting the dry grass where he passed at unparalleled speed. A-frame, perfect. Seesaw, perfect. Tunnel so fast they almost came off the ground. My opinion about Maximus had not changed at all since the year before. What an exceptional dog. They approached the slalom and Saini shouted the command staying 10 feet away from the place. Maximus did not blink and dove into the obstacle perfectly. A few more jumps and done. Saini lifted his arm celebrating and the number one appeared on the electronic scoreboard. It was our turn. On track, Marcus and Arrow, announced the speakers. I could hear someone yelling, Let's go, Marquito! from the almost empty bleachers. I entered the track stepping on the dry grass that crunched as I walked. Happy Arrow with tail wagging and mouth open as if smiling, I put her on the starting mark. Stay, I commanded her. I moved about ten meters away from her, close to the third jump. Lifted my arm and Arrow lifted her butt off the ground from a sitting position to a standing position. Her eyes widened, her mouth opened even wider, and a drop of drool trickled down. Okay, I released her. Arrow launched herself over the first jump and I sprinted across the track as she chased after me. Try to be cautious to secure a spot in the final or be aggressive to beat Saini's time. Even at the risk of being eliminated, 
I did not care. I have to beat Saini. Up! Up! I yelled, pointing to the dog walk. Arrow used all her power and crossed the obstacle in less than two seconds. Tunnel! I yelled next. Arrow made an abrupt turn right at the exit of the dog walk, lifting patches of dry grass and plunging into the tunnel, puffing up the obstacle. We approached the most dangerous point on the track, the slalom. Two tunnels on either side. I could not make a mistake. Weaves! I yelled, pointing to the slalom and moving to the side, leaving the way open for her. Twisting her body to the left, Arrow entered the slalom beautifully and precisely. A few more jumps and done. We finished our run. I looked at the monitor and number one appeared. First place. I bent down and hugged Arrow, giving her a kiss on the top of her head. I looked at Leo outside. He returned the look with a smile. Saini stared at the monitor, trying to understand what had happened. Amy smiled.